This is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. We are going to learn something tonight. Because I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. As I sit here coming at you live from Oakland, California. Site of Game 5 of the NBA Finals tonight. Between the Cleveland Cavaliers against the Golden State Warriors. I got news for y'all. I got news for you right now. If the Cleveland Cavaliers win tonight, there will be a Game 7. I don't believe for one second that the Golden State Warriors are going to lose tonight's game and go back and win in Cleveland. I'm not saying they can't do it. Because if Cleveland suddenly become bricklayers and construction workers and find themselves incapable of making shots, they can lose any game against Golden State. We understand that. But if the Cleveland Cavaliers resemble the team that I watched live Friday night in Cleveland, Ohio at Quicken's Loans Arena, and this team that I watched hit 24 three-pointers, 24 three-pointers, had 49 points in the first quarter, 86 points by halftime, 13 three-pointers in the first half, all. An NBA Finals record. If this team does that again tonight, go to say Warriors ain't winning. There will be a game six back in Cleveland, and that means there will be a game seven right back here. That's what we're dealing with right now. That's what we're faced with. That's the situation. And as a result, I think you got to find yourself asking yourself this simple question. Who's the pressure on? Who does it matter to? Who does it mean more to? Of course, the Cleveland Cavaliers have to win. Otherwise, they're done. But if you want to know as to whether or not there is any any pressure on Golden State whatsoever, yes, there would be. Just imagine and allow me to lay this out for you right now. You're the Golden State Warriors. You are a year removed from being up 3-1 in the NBA Finals after four games. LeBron and Kyrie dropped 41 apiece. They forced game six back in Cleveland. LeBron and Kyrie put on the show. That, that was when LeBron James blocked Steph Curry's shot, then talked smack to him like he was nothing. And then obviously game seven, when they went back to the Oracle in Oakland. And they achieved the improbable beating the Golden State Warriors, 93-89, to win Game 7 and ultimately bringing a championship back to Cleveland, Ohio, in any sport for the first time in 52 years. That's the backdrop of tonight's game, ladies and gentlemen. That's the backdrop of tonight's game because it all started in Game 4 last year. Yes, Cleveland lost that game, but that was the day that LeBron James threw Draymond Green to the floor. Draymond Green... Came up swinging. Hand hit the groin area of LeBron. The referees ignored the fact that LeBron had his private parts on Draymond Green's head, and he was absolutely perfectly within his right to fling at LeBron James. They go back to the film, even though the referee had never called a foul on either dude, and as a result, retroactively decided to invoke a flagrant against Draymond Green and LeBron, but Draymond Green had accumulated enough technicals to the point where he ended up getting himself suspended for game five. And I sit here today, as I have every day this year, telling you, swearing to you on everything that I am, that the Golden State Warriors are sitting here today as the two-time reigning defending NBA champions had it not been for that bogus call by the league office. Kiki Vandeway, to be specific, who I like very much, by the way. But that's neither here nor there. We have fast-forward a year later. Draymond Green is playing. Kevin Durant is on this squad. And as a result, What we have is a situation where you are the Cleveland Cavaliers. You just ran them out of your building. 
And the truth of the matter is, the Golden State Warriors have to win tonight. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? If you don't win, then you are that team. You are that team that's on the verge of surrendering a 3-0 lead, which has never, ever happened in the history of basketball. To overcome a 3-0 deficit in an NBA Finals. That means Kevin Durant's got to show up tonight. That means Draymond Green's got to show up tonight. That means Steph Curry has to show up tonight. And Klay Thompson has to show up tonight. And they got to find a way to ward off LeBron James and Kyrie Irving because even though the press is all on them because they can't afford to lose, they've already answered the call in game four. If they answer the call in game five, you know they're looking forward to going back to Cleveland for game six. And what are you going to do then? You Steph Curry, you can't shoot four of 13 from the field for 14 points like you did in game four. You, Clay Thompson, you can't hit just four of 11 shots. You, Kevin Durant, you can't hit nine of 22 shots. You, Draymond Green, you can't continue to shoot the way that you've been shooting. 25% from three-point range, 35% overall. You better than that, Draymond. You got to do more. Got to do more. You got to do it. This is the dilemma they face. This is the reality of Golden State's situation. And if you think for one second that being up 3-1 provides them the level of comfort, you have no idea. Because when you got a guy who's universally recognized as a top three player in the world in Kevin Durant, electing to depart from your franchise after losing in the Western Conference Finals and therefore and thereby deciding to go to the team that beat them, stacking the deck in ways we have never seen before, You can't then be up 3-0 and then be on the verge of surrendering that lead, and it's going to be okay. Can't do it. Isaiah Thomas, former executive for the New York Knicks, Toronto Raptors, former two-time champion with the Detroit Pistons, NBA Hall of Famer, top 50 player in NBA history. This dude, Isaiah Thomas, talking about this less pressure on Durant than everybody else. I love my brother. I don't know what he's talking about. He needs to be drug tested. Isaiah Thomas can say that all he wants to. I'm not buying it. Of course there's more pressure on Kevin Durant. After deciding to make this move, you damn right. Now, some people will sit there and say, what about Steph Curry, Stephen A? What about Steph Curry? How come there's not more pressure on Steph Curry? He's the reigning two-time league MVP, Stephen A. Very, very valid points. Very valid points. And there's pressure on him, too. But in my opinion, not as much as Durant. I'll elaborate on why that is as this show progresses today. Give Stephen A. a piece of your mind. He is sorry. Call him weekdays from 1 to 3 Eastern. I mean, just trash. At 866-729-3776. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Before I get to I need to say something. Let me be very, very clear. My belief system is a bit different. You know, I understand that Steph Curry, it's not a good look for him when Kyrie drops 40 and he drops 14. But I would remind everybody that prior to game four, in the first three games of these NBA finals, Steph Curry was averaging 28.7 points, 9.7 rebounds, nine assists, on 44.8 shooting, 0.8% shooting from the field and 48.4% shooting from three-point range. That's what Steph Curry was doing. Okay? Let's not forget that. Yeah, could he do better? Sure. Then he did in game four Friday night, absolutely. But he's still Steph Curry. And he might be the reigning two-time league MVP. And he's no Kyrie in terms of finishing at the basket because he might be the greatest in the game of doing that right now. I'm talking about Kyrie. Steph Curry is still the greatest shooter we've ever seen. And I got to tell you something right now. You want to sit up there and you want to put it on him or Klay Thompson or Draymond Green like Isaiah Thomas tried to do, the great Isaiah Thomas? Not to say that Isaiah Thomas in Boston isn't great, but you know when I say Isaiah Thomas, I'm talking about the original, the OG. When he sits up there and tries to put more pressure on those guys as opposed to Kevin Durant, I'm not trying to hear that. 
You 6'11 with a 7'6 wingspan with skills like a guard who can average 30 in the sleep, it's a career 27-point-per-game scorer, okay? And by the way, has been playing like a flat-out star during these finals, averaging 34 a night, okay, against LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers. I don't want to hear a damn thing about how no pressure's on you when you decided to take your surreal magical, sensational talent and stack the deck by adding yourself to a 73-9 and team who's been playing together for years. Draymond, Iguodala, Livingston, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry, to add yourself to that crew, even Ian Clark, if you want to throw him into the equation, to add yourself to that crew and think you don't have pressure, you must be smoking something. But then to top it all off, to be up 3-0, if the Cleveland Cavaliers come back and win this series, oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what I'm going to be able to say. I, I don't know if I'll be able to explain anything. They better not lose tonight. Because if the Cleveland Cavaliers win tonight, they're winning game six. And there will be a game seven. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you right now. Whoa. 866. Seven two nine ESPN. That's eight six six seven two nine three seven seven six. Let's go to Jordan. You're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What's up, Jordan? Hey, what's up, Stephen? How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, I'm all right. Uh, one more thing, uh, real quick. Going to see your mom. Um, I apologize for your loss. Thank you. Um, uh, had cancer eighteen years uh, eight years ago. She beat it, so she's eight years clean this September. So, um. I really feel bad for what happened to you. you. Um, but other than that, this game is big time tonight, man. Um, both sides of the floor, both, play them on both sides of the floor, seems like they're going to be gunning for each other. Defense is going to be up. Like you said, the bus is going to be tight. And I'm looking for this to be a good story to tell, I mean, a storytelling game today. But again, like you said, if they lose, if they lose, it's going to be a game seven, and I think the pressure's more on Golden State right now because LeBron and Kyrie have got nothing to lose tonight. Now, what's your thoughts on that? Well, listen, I just think this. Here's what I think: we have to take into account this reality. We watched the Cleveland Cavaliers drop 49 points in the first quarter, 86 points by halftime, 13 three pointers by halftime. All an NBA Finals record while also shooting 22 free throws in the first quarter. Do we really think that's going to happen tonight? Because I don't see that. I'm not willing to go that far. I'm not willing to venture out on that limb. I'm not willing to sit up there and tell you that I buy that from happening because I don't. That's my issue. I don't see that happening. That's just where I'm at with it, man. I I really, really don't. I can't see that happening. So for me, the question is, do y'all think that Cleveland could shoot as well as they shot Friday night? Do you think they could do that again? I'm not sure. I think Kyrie could do a lot of things. I think LeBron could do it too. And Kevin Love, he hit about six threes as well. So we can't ignore that. We really, really can't. But it's really going to be interesting to see. That much I can tell you. Thanks a lot for the call, Jordan. Let's go to Mark in New Jersey. You're live with Stephen A. Mark, good afternoon. Hey, how good afternoon. Good morning. How you doing? How how are you, Stephen? What's going right. on, boss? I'm good. Um, go ahead. I mean, I I got to I got to totally agree with you on this uh, Isaiah Thomas. I mean, I don't know what he's talking about. Steph, Steph Curry's already got a championship under his belt. He didn't leave his team to go join, you know, the ultimate team that that Kevin Durant did. The, the pressure is clearly on Kevin Durant here, and for him to say there's no pressure, there's definitely some kind of pressure. I mean. He's definitely got some kind of pressure. He, he he was nowhere to be found last game. I mean, he had a couple of nice buckets, but, I mean, he, he was nowhere to be found. He he, he pooped the bed in, in, that, in that game. They, they could have closed out and won that game. And now I want to point out the importance of Cleveland giving up a, a game uh, game three. They win game three. We're tied up 2-2. Going well, we can't, go by, we can't go by that because we can't go by that. We can't go by that. You oh, I know. Tell why we can't, then you don't know why we can't go by that? After. Hold on, listen to me. Win the next game. Listen, listen. You can't hear me? Listen. You can't go by that for this reason. If Cleveland had won game three, do you really think that Golden State would have dropped the ball like that in game four? I think they would have been more up on their P's and Q's. 
But, I mean, that important to game three because if they did win that, I mean, we're tied up 2-2. But, like I said, if, if they did win that, you don't know that they're going to go back and win game four. But if they did, this series is totally different. Looks better for the NBA. They got more games. They're making more money. I, I, can't, I still can't believe that LeBron didn't close that game out. I really can't. I got you. I appreciate the call, man. Thank you so much. Let's go to Raymond and Queens. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, man? Hey, good afternoon, Steve. How you doing? I'm good. Talk to me. All right. Uh, just wanted to ask you a quick question and kind of I totally agree with what you're saying, man. I'm, I'm being honest. This is good talk. I'm having it with a couple of my coworkers. Kevin Lee is not winning this game tonight, man. It, 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 it sounds good, like you say. Do we really believe they're going to score 80-something at half? hit 24 threes again and, and, and you know, 20 something well, or 20 times you said they went to the foul line. It, like, come on, like, that, that's not going to happen tonight. But um, I just want you to clarify, clear something up for me. I want to know if this is true or not. And if it is, man, I kind of lost total respect for Draymond Green. I heard Skip Bayless say on um, Undisputed that he called Kevin Durant after game seven of last year. Uh, Draymond Green? Yes. Yes, he called them in a parking lot. He was in the parking lot. He was in the parking lot. Draymond Green was in the parking lot after they lost game seven, and he got on the phone with Kevin Durant telling him he needed to come here. I I, I lost all respect for him. I I couldn't believe it. I thought – I didn't know Skip was joking around, but I heard him say it on the student, and and I couldn't believe that you actually called this man that you came back from. Like, you you was down 3-1, y'all came back and beat him. Whoa, 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 whoa. First of all – I disagree with you there. I would have more of a problem. I would have more of a problem if Draymond lost to him and asked him to come. But since you handled your business against him by beating him, I don't have a problem with it. I would have more of a problem with it had Draymond lost to him. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess that makes more sense, but uh, it, ju- it, it just rubbed me the wrong way. Like, you would call him after game seven, like immediately after game seven. In a yeah, you know line? what? You know, you, you, your point is valid in terms of damn, you ain't even leave the arena after losing the game seven, and here you are talking about him coming to play for you. That I mean, damn, that, 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 I get your point. You ain't even let, give it some time to salivate, you know, to, to, to marinate rather. You know, you, I get your point with that. that that's valid because it's like, it, it's, it's, you're like, where's your mind at? Where's your heart at? You didn't think you could win? What, what's that about? But evidently it worked. It worked, Raymond. It did. Yeah. Got to run. Appreciate the call. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Back to the phones we go. Charlie in Queens. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? What's up, Stephen A.? My prayers to you and your families. Thank you so much, sir. Go ahead. I got two things. And how about those Aaron Judges and Yankees, man? They're bowling. And Yo, second let, me four. Let, let, let me tell you something right now. Can I bring this up? Let me interrupt you before you even bring up the basketball stuff. Aaron Judge is a stud. Okay? Let me tell you this right now. I don't want to hear this talk, though, that because he's balling the way he's balling, we don't need Bryce Harper. Get them both. Get them both, Charlie. (laughs) This is Bryce Harper we're talking about. If you got to pay, he's 26 years old. Bryce Harper at Yankee Stadium? What's there to talk about? You're talking box office, Charlie. I don't give a damn how great Aaron Judge is. He's only one man. He's only one man swinging the back. Damn it, if you can get two of them, get two. And don't forget get about two. Gary Sanchez, too. Don't forget Say about what? Gary Sanchez, too. Well, I'm, don't not forget forget about Gary. I'm not forgetting about him. I'm just Gary simply Sanchez. saying, I'm just simply saying, there's what so much one man can do. You can get Bryce Harper. I don't want to hear, oh, we got Bryce Harper. We got a judge, so we don't need Bryce Harper. Damn that. Get him. Get him. They're rolling right now. And I think for the key for this game five is Mm -hmm. Tristan Thompson finally showed up in game four. And that's the only, like, the strength of part the Cavs have advantage of it. And Tristan Thompson, for some reason, didn't show up for the first three games. And and it's the key. That's the key right there for game five. And we know – LeBron's going to put up his numbers, and Kyrie is good in, during elimination. So we'll see what happens. And I have a strange feeling that if the, if the Cavs win this tonight, why not win game six? And game seven, 
we don't want to go do, too far could ahead. You but imagine, hey, could you imagine, Charlie, how tight and nervous and pressurized things would be for Golden State if the Cleveland mm-hmm. Cavaliers managed to tie this series at 3-3? Oof, could you imagine that? I mean, damn. I mean, Lord. I mean, look, man, people need to think about that because I'm here to tell you, if Cleveland wins tonight, there will be a game seven. I really believe that. I really do. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate the call, Charlie. Richard in New Jersey. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, Richard. Stephen A. Richard, you're live on the air, buddy. Go ahead. Yeah, how you doing, man? Stephen A., I don't know when you're going to discontinue your argument that if Draymond Green played in Game 5 last year, that the Warriors would have been now. I never, I'll never, i never let that go. I'll never let that go. I'll no, never. I, Richard, I'm not, I'm not talking about. Be, be, please, Richard, what? keep this in mind. I'm not what talking about Game 6. In game hold on, hold, 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 hold hear my point. Hear my point, and then I'll let you respond. I'm okay. not talking about Game 6 or 7. That's legitimate. That's legitimate. I'm talking specifically about game five. Having lost game four in Cleveland, if Draymond Green hadn't gotten that bogus suspension, I believe Golden State would have won that game. That game. I don't care what anybody says. No one will ever convince me otherwise. I'll take that to my death. Nobody is changing my mind about that. They would not have lost game five. You have the same scenario right now. No, it's you not. You have your game five. No, it's not. Plus, no, it's not. Plus, plus Kevin Durant. Well, that's what right. If Kevin, what if Kevin pulled pull it off tonight? Does that oh. mean they're, they're winning the championship? No, Even but I do, think that, I, do believe, I do believe they'll win game six. And they'll force a game seven. And could you imagine? And let me ask you this, Richard. Same question I asked the previous caller. Have you taken into account, could you imagine the amount of pressure that's going to be on Golden State being up 3-0 if this series gets tied 3-3? And they're on the verge after all of this noise because Kevin Durant came to them. They're on the verge of losing or being the first team in the history of the NBA to lose a 3-0 lead in the NBA Finals, could you imagine the pressure that's going to be on them for Game 7 if they lose that, if they if they let this series get tied up at 3-3? Have you thought about that? If they cannot close out this series in Cleveland, if they cannot close it out tonight at their home court, when and where they will ever close it out? It doesn't make sense. If they, if they lose tonight, like you said, they will lose Game 6. So and then there will be a Game will, 7. Yeah, so definitely they will lose Game Seven too because it seems like this team has a problem closing out series. And the whoa, 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 whoa! They did win the championship two years ago. They didn't have they had no problem closing it down, closing it out that night. Think about that. Appreciate the call, Richard. Ron, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, Stephen A. First of all, I want to say my thoughts and prayers are with your family. Thank you. Um, You've always been kind to me taking my Knicks calls, and I, I just uh, wanted to say that. And I also, Ron, we're going to talk, add- talk a lot about the Knicks in the coming weeks, man. We're going to talk yeah. about a lot about the Knicks in the coming weeks, but go ahead. I know, brother. Um, I wanted to ask you, what do you expect from J.R. Smith tonight? You know what, Ron? I don't know. Do you? I mean, the dude shoots one of six for the first two games of the series with a grand total of three points, and then comes out game three and four and drops ten three-pointers. I mean, talk about a basketball player with bipolar. I mean, what else can you describe it as? I mean, this I dude know. is like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to expect. He scares me because if I'm a Golden State, I mean, LeBron's going to get his. Kyrie, I can live with some of the tough ones. But, I mean, I just don't want LeBron to be efficient at what he does tonight, Stephen A. I can live with the 35, 10, and whatever. But let's just take away Kevin Love's threes, and let's not let Jr. kill us from half court. And just may, I mean, I just need to control Jr. And that's what I'm scared about. But I think Golden State, like you, I think you're right. I think they do close it out tonight. It's too stressful for LeBron. And but like you said, it would be fun to see seven. It, uh, let me tell you something right now, man. I, I, listen, I firmly, but I, nobody can convince me if Cleveland wins tonight that they're not going to win in Cleveland for Game Six. Yeah. Nobody can convince me of that. I'm yes. watching these dudes on their home court. They win in they win the night, man. Yep. Golden State's gonna get tight. I'm telling I hear you. you. Man. 
I hear you, man. I need, Steph to, I need Steph to step up. I can't let Iman Shumpert breathe all, all over him. Set some picks and get Steph open. I, I like I respect Iman. I know you respect Iman, but it's time for Steph Curry to say, let's close it. Let's close this thing. But you have a good one, my oh, brother. So well, let me ask you this question before you leave real quick, Ron. Well, is that your way ahead, of man. saying is that your way of saying there should be more pressure on Steph Curry than Durant? Yes. I mean, I, this series has not been about Durant for me. I know I get the whole thing about him. I've always looked at it as it's, it's Steph, you know. Got bullied last year. I thought he's played very well in the finals. But his last game, he took a step back. They took him out. Stephen A., like you talked about all, all the time. And my thing is, Steph, don't worry about KD. Yeah, he's going to help you Yeah, when they, when they try and get the ball out of your hands. But it's time for you to, to process the information and show the world that, you know what? I'm deserving, and it's my time, and I'm not letting this get back to Cleveland to let your imagination, Stephen A., go all over the place. That's all I'm saying. I got, you know what, Ron? I got to give you credit where credit is due. That's one hell of an argument, man. As Don King you, would say, as Don King would say, from your lips to God's ears, I'm gonna think about that. <laughs> Love That's you, what Don King said to me one time when I told him he should retire since he's complaining so much about how everybody's coming after him. He said, you know what, Stephen A., from your lips to God's ears, I'm going to think about that. <laughs> Love you, brother. All right, man. appreciate it. Thanks so much, man. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it. Joshua, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, how's it going, Stephen A.? Talk to me, bro. How are you? I'm doing fine. I just wanted to start out by saying my condolences to your family. You know, I know what it's like to lose a mother. Thank so. you. Thank Anyways, you so much. Um, what do you life. what do you think about Golden State's uh, how how good they are economically for the NBA? Like, you know, I heard you and maybe Max Kellerman talking. I forget who was talking about it, but they were talking about whether or not Golden State was good or bad economically for the NBA. Whether they'd be uh, uh, they're doing I don't great. know. Salary cap limits, or no? They're they're, make, they're making money right now. Listen to listen to Golden State right now. Kevin Durant is scheduled to make twenty seven point seven million dollars. Exercise his player option. He'll probably opt out so he can re up with a new long term deal. Okay. Steph Curry is going to be an unrestricted free agent this summer. You know who else is going to be? Andre Iguodala, Sean Livingston, Zaja Pajulia, Ian Clark, Javale McGee, David West, and Matt Barnes. And James Michael McAdoo is going to be a restricted free agent. So the only dudes under contract for the Warriors next season definitively right now are Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, Kevon Looney, Damian Jones, and Patrick McCall. So when, you look at it from that, so when you look at it from that perspective, they got enough money to play with, man. 15 games in a row. And, you know, you know if they, they lost five games, that would be five more games that the NBA had made more, like, more money off those games, so that that increases. I don't, the let me be honest with you. Let me be honest year. with you. Let me be honest with you. I don't give a damn right now. I'm talking basketball. I don't care about the money. If the series went six, seven games, you know they they stand to make about twenty two million. If it ended in a sweep, they would have lost about twenty two million dollars. I spoke to I spoke oh. to Joe Lake up personally, the owner for the Golden State Warriors, prior to Game Four, and he said we're not paying attention to any of that. We'd make our money right back on. because of the success that we'd reap. So now let's get to the subject of basketball because unless you some do some some trade on Wall Street or, or working for a brokerage firm or whatever, I don't give a damn about what you talk about right now. Let's talk basketball. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So who, who do you think is going to win Game Seven? You, you, know, you know what? You're not. You, you're not game. ready. You're not ready. You're not ready to talk. You said Game Seven. Goodbye, Joshua. Have a nice day. It's Game Five. Game Five tonight. You all over the place. Get focused, and you can call back later. Mark, you're live with Stephen A. on ESPN Radio. What's up? Hey, Stephen A. I just want to say I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you, man. Go um, ahead. I'm wondering if Cleveland comes back and wins this whole series. Oh. Do, you look at, do you look at Kerr saying, hey, man, you were in the record books for being the coach that lost two big-time series? to win a championship, do you start looking at him? Well, I could look at him, but remember, he won the championship his first year. What I would do is, I'm not going to lie to you, the first person I'm looking at is Kevin Durant and Steph Curry. Okay. This is basketball. At some point in time, it ain't about the coaches anymore. Everybody knows what everybody's going to do. It's about whether or not you can stop it. It ain't rocket science. And when you got two players as great as those two are, and you allow 
a team to come back from a 3-0 deficit to beat you, especially if you Steph Curry after losing a 3-1 lead last year, you're not getting over that. You're not getting over it. I'll tell you that right now. Can't but see wouldn't you be the coach? Would you be the coach to motivate them? Like, hey, guys, you can't go through this road again. Well, well, well gotta... I'm quite sure Steve Kerr is doing the best he can. All I'm saying to you is that at, at the end of the day, it comes down to what you got. At the end of the day, it comes down to you. The coaches can put you in position to be successful, but you are the one who has to execute. And if you, being a superstar like Kevin Durant and a superstar like Steph Curry, are unable to execute, that's going to be held against you. It's just that simple. There's no way around it. And I don't think there should be. I don't think there should be. Appreciate the call. Tony and Callie, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, Tony. My brother, Stephen A., man. Look, I think, um, first of all, condolences to your family, my brother. Thank you. Thank um, you, big bro. Appreciate it. I you. think I'm sitting here and I'm listening to everybody, and I'm like, what's more probable to happen, Cleveland hitting 80-something and a half again or Golden State hitting 60-something and a half again? I feel like the fellas need to ratchet up. Golden State I'm speaking of. Ratchet up their D a little bit. Yeah. A little bit more because – that's what's going to take it. But I just want your opinion on what's more probable. I mean, you know, well, we all that's can a, that's an easy. That's an, e- that's that's an easy, that's an easy question. Time. That's an easy question. It damn sure ain't Cleveland hitting 13 threes in the first half, scoring 86 points in the first half, scoring 49 points in one quarter. No, I don't see that happening again. That's far more improbable than anything you could bring me Golden State's way. And I, and I do expect Steph Curry to shoot better than 4 for 13. I do expect Klay Thompson to shoot better than 4 for 11. I do expect Draymond Green to shoot better than 25% from three-point range. And I do expect Kevin Durant to shoot better than 9 or 22 from the field. Plus, I expect Golden State's defense to be better. So with all of that being said, I expect the Golden State Warriors to close things out tonight. Because if they don't, we will be right back here for Game 7. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.